Greetings. I am Wolf Stirfry. Remember me? And I'm back here in Derbyshire again to show you how to survive. any right or wrong ways for surviving. Well, there are a lot of wrong ways, but never mind. Because in this special episode of Man vs. Bushes, I will be providing imperative information if you want to survive in the post-apocalyptic zombie earth. In the apocalypse, I live by the FAP system. Food and water are going to be your main priority. And you need to stock up guys, because those crisps are going to go quicker than you think. Artillery is going to be important if you want to last more than five minutes being chased by your diseased neighbours. Now girls, I know it may seem flattering that these ravenous freaks may want you for your brains rather than your looks. But don't let this distraction hinder you and cause a sticky death. Because you're probably as dumb as shit anyway. Protection is also a key to survival. If you find the right shelter, fortify it correctly. You could evade zombie attacks for weeks, maybe months. But now, to the first item, food. We need to go to the... The zombie kitchen! Now! <coughs> now, if you're anywhere near civilization, you'll have access to more houses and you'll be able to shake a zombie's dismembered torso at. In its simplest form, find an abandoned house. Where there's a house, there's more than likely going to be a kitchen. But first, scour the house for any signs of zombies. If you encounter any, make sure you kill them. Otherwise, it might be a tad difficult trying to cook when you have a distraction like something trying to eat your face. But, um, we need to check the house. Shut up, Phil! We are on a tight schedule here. I'm just trying okay, to speed okay, things up. Okay, 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 I'm sorry. Carry on, sorry, okay. just calm down. Firstly, you're going to need to find yourself a pack. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Tell you we should have searched the house before we f***ing did this. Shut up, Phil! Secondly, find yourself a pack. Thirdly, scavenge the cupboards for beans. The only f***ing tin that was full, and you've broken it. Shut up, Phil! You want this open? Do you? Do you want yeah, this Yeah, I open? do. I do want it open. That's how it's done. Now pour the beans into the pan! Now you gotta find somewhere to cook your beans. The only cooker in this kitchen is a gas cooker. And as gas doesn't run through houses anymore, we're gonna have to find an alternative. Ah! Right. Uh, I think it might be a tad too big. That's what your mum said before she turned into a zombie, Phil. Right! I've had enough of you! I've come all this way to be shouted at. I'm a director. Okay? Sorry, please, Bobby. It's my mother. There's a f***ing 
ain't nothing. You gonna come at me? Yeah? Now, now, once you've cooked your beans, once you've overcooked your beans, you need to add a bit of Mother Nature's bountiful fruits. I got some nettle leaves from the garden. Now I'm gonna ground the bastards up. Don't the bit, the leaves to your bean mixture. Now, it's common sense. That you would cook and boil the nettle leaves beforehand. Get rid of any stingingness. So you don't sting your mouth. But we don't have much time. And I'm a man, so I can take it. Look at this. Fine example of nature's stew. Now, on to artillery, number two. Combat is an essential thing in the zombie apocalypse. What most people think when it comes to zombie combatant is guns, guns, and guns. Maybe some explosives. But as we in Britain haven't got the right to bear arms, and it wasn't exactly legal to carry round a gun, before the apocalypse, without getting seven years inside, you're going to have to be a little bit resourceful on this one. So I suggest finding natural materials and household melee weapons. I'm now going to demonstrate some of my favourite and um, wolf stir fry approved melee weapons. Number one, the curtain pot. Strong, sturdy. And if hit in the right place, can knock out a zombie. Allow me to demonstrate. Now, to finish a zombie off, you must always destroy the prey. Another weapon you can use if you're in a hurry. Oh, oh damn! It. It's a common rock. Watch as I demonstrate the destructive power of the zombie prey. Another thing we have to be thinking about in these great times is global warming because if the apocalypse doesn't kill us this will make sure all of your weapons are biodegradable easily recyclable and are undamaging to the environment when you beat the shit out of a zombie's head Run, Phil! I'm running! Another 
other attack you can do on a zombie without actually harming him will be a tissue flail attack. This is my own personal stash of tissues, which I use for my happy alone time. It flashes of white, confuse the zombie, and send him into a state of shock. Yeah, but well, considering he's already dead, won't his cognitive brain response is not allow him to convey any sort of confusion? Shut up, Phil! Last, but certainly not least, number three. Protection. One of the most important things in the zombie apocalypse would be protection and shelter. If you're in the wilderness or you don't have access to a house, you may need to scavenge raw material. Let's go resource hunting. some time to build a fort of this level of skill it can take hours. I'll see you when it's done. As you can see, I sweat in blood and tears making this the strongest piece of fortification. This is the sturdiest protection that anyone could build from their wits and Mother Nature's resources. If you follow all my rules, you will be guaranteed survival in this wasteland of death. This is all stir fry, signing the fuck out. Ah!